Greetings. My name is Alfred Eugene Pearl. Uh, this is our continuing study in the book of Revelation, and this particular segment is entitled Bad Dates. So why are we calling this segment Bad Dates? Well, it's principally because of these three scriptures. Uh, no man knows the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Uh, Mark 13, 32, that final one on, there, on your screen, tells you that not even the angels know. Uh, Jesus Christ himself, the Son, didn't know when he was on the earth. Uh, and if you think you know, I have a couple scriptures for you. Uh, in such an hour as you think not, you only think you know. No man knows the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And um, everything we're going to look at today is based on nothing more than interpretation. And the word interpretation uh, means beware. Somebody's opinion is coming next. And that's, that's all this is. It's all just opinion. Future prophecy is based on interpretation. And interpretation is nothing more than opinion. Now, let's get started. Um, we're going to look at, uh, at time. Uh, the creation of Adam uh, occurred 4,000 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Well, we really don't. Uh, there was a fellow that named James Usher who devoted his life to pinpointing uh, accurate dates for uh, events in history. And uh, it's quite a scholarly work. It's quite extensive and it's unbelievable. If you, if you ever have a chance to get a copy, uh, please do so. Or I would encourage you to do so anyway. But um, that's not my point. Uh, what my point is uh, the, our numbering system is, is uh, counterintuitive, to say the least. Currently, we have uh, B.C. and A.D. That's our numbering system. And B.C., we count backwards from the birth of Jesus Christ. And this is kind of clumsy because time moves forward. Time never moves backwards. So why count time backwards from the birth of Jesus Christ? Wouldn't it be better to have something, a numbering system like, let's say, AC, after creation? Uh, if we did that, we'd end up with a timeline like this. And I think it would make more sense. Now, I realize some of you are saying, oh, you know, that's already been done. Others have already thought of that. Yeah, I know. They call it AM. Uh, but I'm going to use this designation just because it's just intuitive. Uh, after creation, it just makes sense. And then... Anno Domini, of course, A.D., after in the year of our Lord. Um, so, let's take a look at some things. Now, if we did use a, a numbering system where uh, uh, before Christ and after Christ were the timelines were, were looked at going forward instead of going backwards, we'd be able to spot certain parallels like this one. Uh, Abraham was born uh, in 1948 after creation. Now, I could flippantly just leave it that because that's, uh, that's a date that a lot of people have uh, set as authoritative, but let's take a look why uh, we arrive at that date. Now, in Genesis 5, I believe this is, uh, these are references to men when they gave birth to the son that is in the lineage of Abraham, and their ages are given. Uh, see there, Adam lived 130 years and begat Seth. Well, there's 130 years over the right. And this continues in Genesis, I believe it's 11. Uh, and here's the remaining uh, few uh, references. And of course, the total is 1948. So, Abraham is born 1948 AC. And of course, uh, Israel, modern nation of Israel, became a nation in 1948 A.D., uh, Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. So that and, that and two bucks will get you a cup of coffee, right? Well, no, it's more valuable than that. Uh, let's look at, at some other things. There's, there's some events um, in, uh, in Abraham's life that may parallel certain events in prophecy. Now, Genesis 12 tells us that Abraham, well, his name was Abram before God renamed him, Abram was 75 years old when into the land of Canaan they came. Okay? 
So what is it with the date of 75 years old? <clears throat> well, um, when Abraham entering the land is a fulfillment of God's promise to him that he's going to give him, give him that land. Now, the final fulfillment for the nation of Israel occurred 40 years after they came out of slavery. They <clears throat> crossed the Jordan, entered the land, and their first battle was the stronghold of the land, this impenetrable fortress at Jericho, where the battle plan God gave to, to Joshua was, you take seven trumpets, march around the city once a day for seven days, and on the last day, march around seven times and blow seven trumpets. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. You all know that, that Sunday school story. But it's more than that. It actually occurred. And in prophecy, there's an event where <clears throat> there are seven trumpets. And just as uh, the walls of Jericho fell, so will the four world domination ideologies, these four walls of Satan's counterfeit kingdom. Uh, and of course, that could indeed take place. Uh, when the nation Israel is 75 years old, the trumpets might begin in 2023. Uh, but again, I'd like you to look at the top of your screen there and remember what this segment is entitled. These are dates based on nothing more than Alfred Pearl's vivid imagination and um, could be nothing more than that. Probably a bad date. You see, as a pan eschatologist, I, uh, my modus operandi is to look at uh, history and events, current events taking place, to try to identify if prophecy as it's being fulfilled. Uh, pan eschatologist. I'm just going to wait and see how prophecy pans out. So I don't put my trust in dates. But I saw these parallels and I thought I'd share them. But I, again, I don't want you to think that um, they're authoritative by any sense, by any stretch of the imagination. No. Okay, here's another one. Uh, Moses was four score years old. That's 80 years old uh, when he spoke before Pharaoh. Now, what did Moses do before Pharaoh? Well, he made seven pronouncements. He appeared before Pharaoh seven times. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Uh, well, the final three times it says God hardened his heart. Uh, in any case, these seven pronouncements of Moses before Pharaoh uh, brought the ten plagues upon the Egyptians. And following on the heels of these seven pronouncements was the exodus of the chosen people from their 400 years of servitude in Egypt. Okay, so Moses is 80 when he makes these seven proclamations before Pharaoh, after which is the exodus from Egypt. Well, let's see. There's a mighty angel in the sixth trumpet. And when he sounds his seven trumpets, these seven thunders utter their voices. So there's seven pronouncements being made, right? And following this, these seven pronouncements is the last trump and the exodus of the church, the called, chosen, and faithful uh, from the, their 400 decades of bondage in this world. You know Satan is the prince of this world, right? He is the, uh, he's the god of this world, it says in the Bible. Uh, he became the god of this world when he precipitated the fall of Adam, and he still is the, the god of this world. And there were no chosen people before God raised up Abraham. And of course, that was uh, at, the, at the time, just after the fall of Babel, uh, we begin, the Bible doesn't broach any other subjects, no other characters introduced before the uh, the genealogy of Abraham, God introduces Abraham. So uh, he is on the cusp of the age, 2,000 years after creation. So uh, from from that time to Christ is 4,000 years. I'm sorry, till now, from that time till now, or actually uh, this will be 4,000 years when I believe this will culminate. Uh, uh, now, if Christ was resurrected in 34 AD, uh, will the last trump occur in, in 2034 AD? Uh, exactly 2,000 years later. Uh, the first two ages were 4,000 years combined, so that's 2,000 for each year. Uh, will it be 4,000 years from the time of Abraham to the time of the last trump? Uh, again, uh, the top of your screen there. Uh, anytime you're looking at future prophecy and trying to assign dates, 
the greatest likelihood is they're going to be wrong. But whether they're wrong or not, it's based on interpretation. And of course, that makes it a bad date. Thus the title of this segment. Again, I need to remind you, our purpose, uh, we are called to be ready. Uh, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Okay, here's another bad date. Ishmael was born 2035 AC, after creation. Now, you know the story of Ishmael. Uh, God told Abraham he and his wife Sarah would have a son. Uh, but Sarah was barren, and uh, after a couple of decades of being in menopause, you know, she didn't have much faith, and she just said, Abraham, you know, if you want a son, here, take my handmaiden, uh, Hagar, and have a son by her. Make her your wife, have a son by her, and you'll have your son. So they set about to self-fulfill uh, this prophecy of God to Abraham that he would have a son. And of course, 13 years later, Sarah got pregnant and had a son. And Ishmael made fun of this 90-year-old uh, woman with a baby. So he thus established his distinguishing characteristic that he is against. And instead of the child of promise, Isaac. And even today, the world of Islam considers Ishmael to be the child of promise. And most of them, well, many I should say, don't even regard Isaac as ever having existed. They consider him to be a myth. Now, given that, will Antichrist arise uh, on the anniversary of Ishmael's birth in 2035 AD? Is there going to be a parallel there? Um, the word Antichrist anti does mean against or instead of, uh, and the Antichrist is indeed the uh, against or instead of Christ. So, uh, there's a parallel there, but I'm not sure the date is correct. Uh, again, watch and be ready. Uh, don't put your eggs in this basket or any basket. Uh, just be faithful. And, but keep your finger on the pulse uh, of the signs of the times. Be aware of, of our current events going on around you. I would encourage you to be a pan it's the most, uh, It's the easiest position to take. Uh, it's it's never wrong because if you never uh, put your faith in in, in 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 events before they take place, you can't be wrong. You're just waiting around and seeing how things pan out. And when you see events take place, see if you can identify them as being part of the pattern of prophecy presented in Revelation. And, and uh, perhaps you'll see what I see. Okay. Uh, the final bad date we have is Isaac. Child of Promise, born 2048 A.C., uh, 100 years after Abraham was born, I, he and his wife had this child named Isaac, which means laughter. Uh, Abraham laughed for joy when the angel told him he'd have a son. Uh, Sarah laughed out of incredulity, so they named the child Laughter, Isaac. And this, is, <laughs> this name is almost unpronounceable in Hebrew. Yishach, it's just impossible to pronounce. I believe even, even Israelis cheat on the pronunciation of Isaac. Uh, and of course, um, uh, will the triumphant return of Jesus Christ take place on the anniversary of Isaac's birth? Most likely not, but there's a parallel there. It's, it's interesting how uh, the events of prophecy parallel, parallel these events that took place uh, all those years ago. It's almost as if it was planned. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless. Uh, I hope I didn't give anybody the idea that I'm looking at these dates and counting on them. I'm not. Uh, I'm just drawing your attention to them, uh, trying to show you that God uh, has gone before us. He's planned the future. And if we, we can safely trust in him, uh, Noah trusted God and got into the ark, and he was preserved safe through an event that killed everybody else on the planet. Jesus is our ark. We need to enter in uh, to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, and we will be safe through the events that are coming upon the earth very soon. God bless. I hope uh, you join me in our next segment.